Hello and welcome back to Cross Electronics. Back again to this Nissan X Trail where I worked at before. And just for kicks, I want to know what what's up with the other trouble codes in the ECU from the engine. Maybe this helps the customer to decide what to do with this car. First of all, I want to do a full scan of all the of all the modules here and see what I get. I recharge the battery. Maybe I have some low voltage codes in here, but I don't know. Let's see. So full scan is done. On the engine I have three codes. Not that much modules in here. I have a code in the all-wheel drive module. Let's see what's there. Engine signal one. Maybe this is because the faults in the ECU. So I have to deal with these three codes here. This is clear because I have disconnected this sensor. I have to deal with these both codes here. The ASCD function, I did some research. This is the automatic speed control device, which is also known as the cruise control simply. And this boost sensor for the turbo. Doesn't matter, I start with the boost sensor first and then maybe the ASCD function. Yeah, let's go from there. At first I will clear these codes and see which one comes back immediately. Let's do this. Good. Make cycle ignition off and on. on the radio. Read without starting the engine. Let's see, no faults. One more time, ignition cycle. Wait a little bit longer this time. Ignition on. Radio off. Read the codes again. Again, no fault. Okay. For the third time. Okay, now I waited five minutes or so. Let's unlock the car. Ignition on. And read the code. Read the code again. Let's see. Again, no fault. So this tells me we don't have a wiring integrity problem here on some sensors. Uh, I hope so. I have disconnected the camshaft sensor, remember. The ECU may, uh, cannot detect this fault because this is a, is a Hall effect sensor and the signal and the output is low and high. And the ECU can also not monitor the supply voltage to the sensor. So the ECU will not trigger a code for this until the engine is running. Then can, when the engine is running, the ECU can see there is no signal from the camshaft sensor but from the crankshaft, then the trigger for, the, for this code is set. Now start the engine and let's see what's up with the other problems, the other both codes. Scan it again. Okay, now I have the camshaft position sensor as expected, but this ASCD function, this seems to be also a hard fault. Read again, maybe the third code comes back also. No. 
ignition off. Ignition on. Don't start the car. Read it again. Oh, uh -huh. now I have the P0345 back, the boost sensor, without driving the car. So let's see if there is a live data pit for this sensor that I can see what what the engine can see from this sensor. Here, TC boost pressure and the barometric pressure. This is the sensor inside the ECU. Okay, let's show this both. Start the engine. I have some reading on the boost pressure sensor. Huh. Why does the ECU trigger this fault? I don't know. Good thing I found this troubleshooting guide in the internet for exactly this engine from Nissan. Let's read. The turbocharger boost sensor detects pressure in the exit side of the turbo of the charge air cooler. The sensor output voltage to the ECM increase as pressure increases. Okay, that means this uh, should be an analog signal and the output. Let's see the detection logic. P0345 is exactly what we have here. Turbocharger boost sensor circuit input low. Excessively low voltage from the sensor to the ECM. Turbocharger circuit high. Extremely high at the output and range performance. That means the reading from the sensor is out of range compared to the barometric sensor built into the ECU. Okay, so I have three possibilities that can set this code. It's a bit unsexy because I don't know which of these three are we have exactly here in this car. So now this is simple check power and ground. This sensor works with the 5 volt reference voltage from the ECU. That's good to know on term on pin 3. Good to know and ground. Ground is at terminal 2. Okay. And the output is on pin 1 from the sensor. Okay, so let's find the sensor in the car. Okay, I found it here on top of the throttle body housing. This here is my sensor. Let's check the wiring color. We have green, orange and brown. My lamp makes the color look different. Now you can see. Here on my software. Sorry, it's in German, but the colors match up. Now, first of all, check the power and ground directly at the sensor. The power and ground comes from the ECU. When I check it on the sensor directly, I can eliminate the wiring problem to the ECU. See, of course, five volt is okay. So, according to my diagram here, uh, light green should go to the ECU on this pin. Let's check this. Nissan made a very good job with this harness here. I cannot move this connector anywhere to see my green wire which should be behind here somewhere 
I have continuity as well. That means my harness is good. No corrosion or bent pins on the ECU as well. So let's play a bit around. I have connect the power and ground and the signal wire on the sensor itself here is the voltage from the signal wire at the moment when the engine is off is 1.1 volt and here I want to simulate the output signal from the sensor with some resistors jumped to uh, the 5 volt reference voltage now let's watch the actual value from this sensor on the scanner. It is atmospheric pressure. Now let's connect my resistor. And now I have 3.1 volt. And damn. 0.75, this, this is wrong. It's not so easy as I thought to play with the sensor signal here because the ECU uh, expects a certain value of the sensor depends on engine load and throttle body position and so on. When I simulate the wrong signal at the time and the engine is off and the throttle body is closed, the ECU will drop, uh, drop the code immediately and that is what I uh, found here now. Okay, short summary so far. I have checked the wiring integrity. 5 volt reference at the sensor is good. That means the connection to the ECU is also good. Ground is good, I have no short to ground to the signal wire or short to 5 volt to the signal wire because I have 1.1 volt at the output which is a normal value from this sensor. Then wiring to the ECU, the signal wire is also ok. Now wiring integrity is good at all. Now next I want to check the ECU input. I will try to simulate the sensor output signal with my power supply here. This is a high precision power supply. Let's do this. Unplug the sensor for sure. That I don't want to destroy it with over voltage. Low risk what I want to do. Good. Now, slowly rise up the voltage and let's see what the ECU does. That seems to work. Make some notes here. Start with 1.1 volt, then I have 0 0.95. Let's write this down. Okay, 1.1 volt at 0 0.96 bar. Go to 1 bar. One point one six one point three for one point one point one bar. Now I think you dropped the code because I was over the limit. So let's see where the limit is exactly. Make sure no codes. Okay.
Now again, 1.3 is safe. Let's check this. This 1.1 bar. Now go to 1.320. 1.12 30 No reaction here 40 Now the error is here So between 1.3 30 and 40 ECU drops the code Now the next test I want to do is start the engine and see if the ECU reaction is the same as when the engine is off Let's do that So I have to add my notes here. This here is when engine is off. Important thing is the voltage when the issue drops the code is at 1.4 volt. So definitely a difference when the engine is off and when the engine is on. Based on this information here, I would say the ECU input is okay. But let's confirm this anyways with another car with the same engine. Looks a little bit different from the cover, but it is the same. Let's do this test on this engine and see if the ECU reacts the same, just for kicks. Okay, same setup here. Let's do this experiment again, go to 1.3 Compare the values that I wrote down from the Nissan, let's see if they are the same 1.1 bar at 1.3 volts, exactly the same Go a little bit higher and then the issue should drop the error Now I have the error at 1.4 volt. Values are exactly the same on both ECUs. So definitely I can say the ECU input is okay on this engine here, on this ECU. So let's do some crazy stuff here. Let's compare the output signals from both cars. Here, Nissan, here, Renault both connected to the picoscope on channel 1 the blue trace is the Nissan on channel 2 the red trace is Renault let's start both cars filling up the garage with diesel fumes in the name of science <laughs> Let's see, blue trace Nissan, red trace Renault. What I can see, I have some spikes here from the Nissan. Let's play a bit with the time base. Oh, 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 oh. Can you see the spikes here? Let's 
wait for a good capture. Stop it and compare the voltage. These excessive spikes here can cause the ECU to trigger the fault. Make some measurements on the blue trace here. 1.5 volt. This is enough to trigger the ECU to drop the fault. Aha. Uh -huh. And on the red trace, I have peaks of 1.2 volts. Aha, uh -huh. this is the problem. These spikes here are the reason for dropping the code. Haha. <laughs> Now from where come these spikes? That's the question now.